Hello everybody, it's Doc here from On The Money Options. It's Friday, July 20th. Today was the July option expiration. It's just a few minutes after the close and it was not an impressive week. Let's look at the SPY, an ETF that mimics the S&P 500. I have this chart set to the weekly view. Each mark, or candlestick we call it, shows the market movement for a week. The candlestick chart helps you see the total movement in the index each week. It also shows you the open and the close of the week. If the candle is hollow or open, the market moved up for the week. If the candle is filled in red, the market closed down or lower for the week. Looking at this week's candle, you can see what appears to be a cross. Actually, this means the open and the close for the week were the same. Since the length of the vertical line is very short, this means the market moved in a very narrow range. In the parlance of the Japanese candlestick method, we would call this a doji week. Doji candlesticks often signal the end of the prior move. In this case, you see that we had three weeks up to the doji. Adding some technical analysis to this chart, you can see a pennant pattern. This is a consolidation pattern, basically suggesting the market is taking a break and looking for more direction. Since we've been in a long-term uptrend, you may expect to see the price action to break above the pattern. This happened last week. This week's close could be a concern. The price action stalled to the last two previous highs in the consolidation. This could signal the price action may pull back inside the pattern. There's no doubt that we've had a lot of news hitting the markets, trade wars, currency wars, and the like. From that standpoint, the market has been very resilient. Now I want to move to another chart that may add some color. This chart is the rate of change for the S&P 500. The chart period covers 15 years. The important part of the chart is the lower pane. This is the actual calculation of the rate of change. This is the weekly chart, so I'm comparing the rate of change using the past 26 weeks. Basically, you want to see the rate of change above the zero line. As you can see, the ROC line is approaching zero. This can be interpreted as meaning the upward momentum of the market is waning. Now look at the three areas that I've marked. These areas show times when the ROC was negative for more than one week. As you can see, this has only happened three times in the past 15 years, and a cross below zero should get your attention. Each time this rate of change goes negative, we've seen the market retreat. I want to point out that the ROC is not negative at this point, but it is trending down to the zero line, and this bears watching. Now, why is this important? Well, next week we're going to have a flood of S&P 500 companies begin reporting second quarter earnings. Here's the calendar of just those reporting next week. The expectation for good earnings has pushed the market higher. If next week we don't see some impressive earnings out of this group, you could see the market back up. Monday is the beginning of the August option expiration cycle. The volatility is low, and it'd be a really good time to put on some protection. I expect some big movement in the market next week. Which way? Well, I don't know. That's why I always say trade safely and stay hedged. This is Doc at OnTheMoneyOptions.com. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So long.